Let's talk about the world, all of this. You may be wondering, how will I fit the entire world and all that's within it into a single seven minute talk? It all came to me during my school trip to the Netherlands, taking part in the world's biggest model United Nations conference. During this week-long trip, we visited Amsterdam for a sustainability tour, showing us all the various ways the city is currently tackling the issue of climate change. You'd think that this three-hour-long tour would mean nothing in comparison to the five-day MUN conference. Yet, it's safe to say that the sustainability tour was the highlight of my trip, inspiring me to create this very talk itself. Here's why. Our tour guide, Cornelia, had showed us an old, massive, coal-powered electricity plant, the Hemwig 8 power station. For those who are unaware, coal-powered electricity plants are industrial, factory-like buildings in which coal is burnt to produce electricity. The electricity is then used to power most of the city. Cornelia expressed how the coal-powered electricity plant was constructed in the late 1970s under a long-term contract. The contract meant that the power station could be built for low costs, yet produce so much electricity as to power a significant portion of that city. It had been a great addition to the city of Amsterdam upon construction. Years later, however, more efficient ways of getting electricity to the city of Amsterdam had been implemented, causing the coal-powered electricity plant to run obsolete, being nothing but an inefficient method of electricity production, releasing an absurd amount of CO2 and SO2 emissions into the air in the process. The long-term contract keeps the coal-powered electricity plants running to this very day. Five of such coal-powered electricity plants exist in the city of Amsterdam today. Learning about this situation, how a single, long-term contract was able to undermine the sustainability of an entire city, led me to consider all the various unpredictable consequences and spin-offs that our daily actions may have on possibly the most irrelevant stuff. This right here in my hand is a bamboo toothbrush. Recently, our school began selling these bamboo toothbrushes along with other bamboo products to counteract the issue with plastic overconsumption. Bamboo is biodegradable and a great alternative to plastic. Yet, if the majority of us were to switch over to bamboo products, such as this very toothbrush, it would lead to a shortage of bamboo trees in southeastern Asia. Such a change in the amount of trees would then cause the panda population to return to endangerment, thus causing the panda population to go back into endangerment. Statistics show that nations such as China and Indonesia spend between 3 to 7 billion US dollars per year to preserve the panda population. Thus, an increase in the usage of bamboo products to counteract the issue of plastic overconsumption will only raise that number to the tens of billions, likely even more. In such a situation, what do we sacrifice? Our wealth, our resources, or our pandas. Devastating, huh? At this point, you may be thinking, such coincidences are entirely terrible. However, there are situations with positive spin-offs. Take one of the most controversial ideas today, space exploration. There are many of us that believe that we have no future in space, but there's no point in investing billions of dollars to develop the space industry. There is some truth to that. Why spend extraordinary amounts of time, money, and effort up there when we could be solving the problems we have down here? Why seek discovery on Mars? 
when we still haven't discovered 95% of our very own oceans? Well, due to the absurd difficulty of interacting with space, NASA scientists, along with other scientists around the world, have been inclined to develop tools which make space exploration more convenient. One tool in particular is the digital image processing used by NASA to enhance lunar photography. Lunar photography was pretty uh, decent for NASA and it did provide some benefits. However, when it was reverse engineered in the field of medicine by scientist Raymond Damodillion, he then created the MRI and CAT scans, which are considered to be breakthroughs in modern technology. I'm sure you have all seen such machines at hospitals and clinics. CAT scans are used for a range of applications, such as detecting dislocated or broken bones and fractured blood vessels, whereas MRI scans can be used to do as much as detect cancer cells within patients. There have been other sort of breakthroughs as well in the field of medicine and in other fields, like the military for example. There have been water purifiers, solar panels, and military grade food packaging that have all come from a result of the space industry creating minuscule tools which have then helped these ideas and these spheres develop. Mind you know that these were all inventions that had been unintentionally invented at the time, which we now cannot live without today. With the space industry being responsible for the technology that helps us detect cancers, we can as well as hope that someday in the future, the space industry will find a cure for cancer itself. I know what you're thinking. Where am I getting at? The overarching point is that all things are related. No matter how minuscule or grandiose your actions may be, there is a chance that they'll influence you and your surroundings in unimaginably ways. No matter how constructive or destructive your intentions are, your actions, on the other hand, can lead to positive and negative impacts. There is a moral to this. If the past really does show us that everything is possible, and anything can happen, then we shouldn't doubt the decisions that we make. We shouldn't be afraid to explore new concepts. And most importantly, we shouldn't fear spreading our ideas.